All right, here we are back again this evening in uh, our Wednesday night Bible study. Good to be back. We appreciate the uh, opportunity to stand once again. Uh, we'll be in Romans chapter 6 this evening, continuing on <clears throat> in the book of Romans with the great apostle Paul. As you're turning to chapter 6, I want to back up just a moment and uh, refresh to where we were in chapter 5 on verse 21. The last verse says, uh, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. And then he continues on in his letter is what we get here in verse number six. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Before we go any further, let's ask Father to bless. We ask, Father, for your blessings upon the reading of this word this evening, Father. We thank you again for this opportunity to stand. We ask, Father, that you allow this word to land on fertile ground this evening. Very good study tonight, Father, and we uh, desire your spirit. Father, all these things we ask in Christ's name, amen and amen. All right, the question is, is what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? that grace may abound. Let me say to you tonight that though you have grace, it's not a covering through willful sin. It's not a license for you to act any way you want to. And that's what Paul was accused of. Paul was accused of teaching that after you had accepted Christ, that uh, regardless what you've done, you are okay, but there are criteria, and we want to explain that this evening. As you go through and you read Paul's writings, you'll notice how he goes over and over and over again. This is the beginners now. Remember, this is the ABCs of, of uh, beginner Christianity, and it's trying to make everyone aware of what Christ expects of us. Okay, So he says here, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? No! There still is the law. You're not above the law. The law will always stand. Okay? Many will try to teach that uh, Christ tried to abolish the law. But that's not true. If you'll turn with me over to Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to be a lot of places this evening. Hopefully that uh, everyone can keep up. But Matthew chapter 5, verse uh, number 17, Christ said, Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Amen. He has come to fulfill the law. Therefore, the law is still here. Okay, We still have the law. Even though you're a Christian, it doesn't mean that you can go out and do anything to break a civil law and get by with it. It doesn't work that way. Christ said in 18, he said, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Amen. Everything will, it, it, <laughs> in case you don't know what this means, the jot is the smallest letter in the Hebrew language. The very smallest. <clears throat> He's comparing it to the very smallest of the part of the law. And not only that, he says the tittle. Now, the tittle is uh, a small ornament uh, over the Hebrew letters. It, it changes the letters with this ornament. So even with that, he said, all these things will be fulfilled. Know that these laws will be fulfilled. Ordinances and, and blood laws and things of that nature have been taken care of, have been done. But there are laws that won't be fulfilled until uh, the great judgment. Amen. and But yet there are still laws that will have to be um, continued through while we are still in the flesh. Amen. You understand Amen. that? Amen. All right. So again, as we go back, he says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He's talking about pardonable sin here, okay? He's talking about pardonable sin. Now, all sin is pardonable right now. Amen. We're talking about 
pardonable sin here in November the 14th, 2018, just for the record. Why do you say it like that? Because there's only one sin that is unpardonable. Amen. And it cannot be committed right now. Why? Turn with me over to Mark chapter 13. And we'll document that. Mark 13, <clears throat> verse number 9. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake for a testimony against them. 10. And the gospel must be published among all nations. Number 11 is why we came. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you shall speak, neither do you premeditate. For whatsoever ye shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Spirit. If you were to refuse to speak because the Holy Spirit is speaking through you, that is the unpardonable sin. How come it can't be committed now? Because the Antichrist is not here. We are not being delivered up to counsel. We are not being under uh, uh, pressure or persecution for 10 days. Amen. So we know that this can't happen yet. But what Paul is trying to say back in Romans, he is saying about these pardonable sins, okay? We're going to get a lot on sins. And I want to talk to you tonight on a lower basis so that everybody will understand, that everybody can get this. People beat themselves up so often and don't really understand what they have. They don't understand what they've got with Christ as their Savior. Amen? All right, two. God forbid, Paul says, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? That's a correct. Three. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus were baptized into his death? This concept and this action that you take through baptism is honorable unto the Father. Okay? Let's look over here in... Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, we're going to be going there a lot tonight, so hold your finger in 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, and verse number 43, it says, It is sown in dishonor and is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness and raised in power. What are you talking about, Brother Randall? Well, when Christ died, the only way that we can uh, emulate this death that Christ went through is through a liquid grave. Sown in weakness, raised in power. Amen? Amen? So we know that the baptism is honorable unto the Father. What's it saying? I'm going to get ahead of myself here just a little bit just to explain where I'm at. What we must realize is, is that through baptism, we are honoring this shedding of the old man, yeah. and the yeah. resurrecting yeah. of the new. Amen. We are doing away with the old part. And now listen to me. Once you committed yourself to Christ, as soon as you gave your heart to the Lord, as soon as you said, I want to be saved by the blood of Christ and accept him, confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart, Thou shalt not be saved. Soon as you were saved. Now, your sins were gone at that very moment. Right. You say, well, Brother Randall, I didn't get baptized for about two years later. That's okay. That's quite all right. But what Paul is trying to say here is, is that know you not that so many of us as were baptized in Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. We have to put away the old man. Okay? That's what is expected to put away the old man, and to bring out the newness of man, okay? Now, <laughs> it's honorable unto the Father, but look here, it don't keep you from sinning. 
Okay? Let me say it like that. It doesn't keep you from being uh, wrong every now and again. Okay? It doesn't keep you from uh, 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 falling short. So therefore, we must what? Repent. Amen? Yes. We must continue to repent. So Paul saying that here in verse number four. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism. You see that? Into him. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Okay? I want to explain this with you a little bit. He's talking about exactly what I've said. As we go through the action of baptism, now some churches like to use baptism for membership. Some people like to say, you be baptized into our service or into our church. But that's not what the Lord says is a requirement. Amen? What about if a man doesn't get baptized, Brother Randall? What if he, he dies before he gets baptized? Well, uh, we have that example. Uh, we talk about the thief on the cross quite often. He accepted Christ. Did he have an opportunity for baptism? No, he did. So therefore, we know that it's only honorable unto God. It's only honorable to him and shows that you respect that death and the resurrection. Okay? But Paul says here, he says that, uh, <clears throat> that like as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. This newness of life should take over in your life at that very moment when you accept Christ as your Savior. Amen. Okay? That's the newness of life. Now, this newness of life he's talking about here, it's like it, 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 it's called like a new sphere. Okay? It gives you a new opportunity to live your life a free, not free as to do what you want to do, but free from condemnation of the things that were behind you. Amen. Right. So, so we see here that this newness of life is very important, but we must name our sins daily. Did you get that? Write that down. Amen. We must name our sins daily. I'm talking about naming them. Amen. Call them for what they are. Let the Father know, hey, I made a big mistake today. Who's it between? You and that person or you and that whatever? No, it's between you and the Father. Yes. Take it to the Father. If you don't get anything out of this message tonight, out of this study, take it to the Father Amen. and leave it there. Amen? All right, so we know that Paul's talking here that through baptism, there should be a newness of life. Baptism, that water does not change you, okay? Yeah. It, it, I don't care what they used. If they used dirty water or uh, ocean water or uh, crystal clear water uh, from another, it doesn't matter. The water is not going to change you. That newness of life that you have is stored with the Father. Yes. And that's something that you must have to carry on. This is something that you gain from the acceptance of Christ and through the water baptism. It's a newness of life. And this is, let's call it like a clean slate, okay? Call it that way. All right. Try my best to explain it this evening. Hopefully I'm being helpful to you. All right. Verse number five. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Uh -huh. Amen. He is in us and we are in him. Uh -huh. Do you see that? Yeah. Christ dwells with inside of you. Yes. Now, if you allow sin to continue to reign in your life without repentance, Christ cannot reign inside that temple. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So therefore, we go through repentance. Repentance, asking Father to forgive us in Jesus' name. Okay? Yeah. Remember that. Verse number six. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Now, he's talking here about at the time of your death. That's what he's asking you to understand. He said, knowing this, listen, that our old man is crucified with him, 
Now we knew that we are crucified with him as, in other words, we are clean at that very moment. But friends, you can't stay that clean. You can't stay that clean. Therefore, you must come to repentance as often as possible. Now he says that the body of sin might be destroyed. What body of sin? This old flesh you're living in. Amen. Amen. This old flesh is sinful. Yes. Does that give us a license? No, it doesn't give you a license, but it does. In the eyes of the Father, he does accept and know that the flesh is weak. Yes. We've never had the flesh before. <laughs> We've had our spirit, that which is in us. We understand how that works. But we've never had the flesh before. So therefore, our falling short falls even more frequent on others that don't know and don't understand and that are overtaken, you understand. But when you come to the conclusion that there is a way to get away from all this stuff, all the sin that so easily besets you or uh, the things that you stumble against, once you learn how to control that, there's, there's fellowship with you and the Father. When you have fellowship with the Father, you not only have fellowship, but you have favor with him. Amen? Amen. And when you have favor with the Father, you have blessings from the Lord. Amen. He has a storehouse that he wants to open up for you. Amen? Amen. But so many Christians today don't realize what they're passing up because they continue to live in a lifestyle and they, they've heard somebody say it's okay to do this or it's okay to do that, but they never rightly divide the word of truth and find out for themselves. Amen. Yeah. This is a great chapter for a young Christian to understand that you need to go to the Father daily. Amen. I don't care if you lock yourself in a room and you never come out again since you've been saved. Friend, you're going to have thoughts. You're going to say things. You're gonna, there's going to be times when you, the flesh is going to take over and you're going to need to go to the Father, okay? Amen. Verse number six. He said here that, uh, that, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. When will the body be destroyed? Let's look over in 1 Corinthians 15 again. Told you to hold your place, sir. And I did not. 1 Corinthians 15, about verse number 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doeth corruption in incorruption. There's where your body must make a separation. Yes. There's where the spirit and the body makes its separation. Amen. Why? Because the word plainly says that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's right. Amen. The kingdom of heaven is where you want to go. Amen. Amen. All right. So you got all that figured out. 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. How many is all? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm still yet to figure out how rapturists get just a few out of all. Yeah. All means all. I'm sorry. It's it's all of all, not all of one group or all of a small group. But I'm talking about all, all flesh. He said, "In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye." At the last trump, this is when it's going to happen. At the last trump, it ain't going to happen before. At the last trump, it's not going to happen until the last trump comes. Amen. That's right. Amen. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Here's where I wanted to be. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. In other words, this fallible must put on incorruption. How you like that for changing the words a little bit? This fallible body, this body that continues to fall short, that sins is one day going to be changed. You're not going to have a body, per se. You're going to have your spirit. You'll have a spiritual body. It'll be a place for your spirit and your soul to, to house, okay? That's what it will be. The same that we had in the first earth age. The very same body. Okay? He said that, For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. In other words, this mortal is liable to die, and the immortality is 
deathlessness. Okay? So we know that there's going to be a change. And when is that going to happen? Well, when you give up the spirit, that's when that happens. Amen? Mm -hmm. Regardless if it's before the coming of the Lord or if it's at the last trump. Amen. Amen. You're not going to take this body with you. That's what Paul's trying to Amen. say. Okay. Went a long way around to run that one, but that's what it needed. All right. Verse number seven. For he that is dead is free from sin. Did you see that? Yeah. If you're no longer in this body, my mother, she's gone to be with the Lord. She no longer is sinning. Her record stopped. That yes. very second she gave up the goat. You see that? Yes, amen. Anybody in your family, your friends, anybody that has ever passed, their time stopped at the giving up of the Spirit at that very moment. We see that there are different places in the Word of God that people have been taken. But one strikes my mind I want to go over here to Matthew chapter 2. I want to talk to you just a moment here. I know it might get off course here just a little bit, but that's okay. Matthew chapter 2. Let's start about verse number 16. <clears throat> then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Why did you go there, Brother Randall? I wanted to bring out to you that as hurtful And as sorrowful it was during that time. These babies will never know sin. These babies will never be having to go through judgment. These babies will never know what it's like to be an adult. But yet they don't have to worry about the toils of this life. As we go on, I'm going to read here just a little bit. 17. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentations and weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. Now, to get this full translation, you must turn over to Jeremiah. Let's go over to Jeremiah real quick, Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah chapter 31 and this is what is being quoted. <clears throat> 15 and 16. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentations and bitter weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Now who is Rachel? Rachel is the mother of Benjamin and Jacob. Okay? <laughs> if that doesn't ring a bell, let, let, let's go on down and to find out what Jacob done. Jacob brought out Manasseh and Ephraim. In other words, you're talking about Israel here, okay? You're talking about the children, the offspring. Verse 18, or excuse me, 16. Thus saith the Lord... Refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. In other words, here in the near future, these will be reunited again. Amen? Amen. Jacob and Benjamin will come again one time. That's another study in itself. I knew I'd get off on it just a little bit, but at either rate, these children never knew sin. Why we went there. They never had to encounter sin. So in other words, when you give up, verse number seven, he said, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Is that a correct? Amen. Yes, sir, it is. Amen. All right, verse number eight. Now, if we be dead with Christ, 
we believe that we shall also live with him. This is a choice that must be made in a man or a woman, boy or girl's life. Amen. Do you want to reign with Christ? Yeah. Amen. He said, for now, if uh, we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. If you believe in him, you will live with him. Amen. So there's that choice that needs to be made in a person's life. Verse 9. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. Amen. Isn't that great? Amen. None of us shall have to deal with that again. Go over to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews 2 and 14. For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also he himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is, the devil. Amen. So we know that through his death that he can no more be uh, 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 worry about death again is what he's trying to say. He said, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, death from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. And who is death? We know that Satan is dead. Okay, uh -huh. We know that he has no more power over him. Same as those loved ones that have already gone before us. He has no more power over them. So what does that tell you? Now, it doesn't say it right here. But what does that tell you? That they are in a safe place. Amen? Amen. Christ said in my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not true, I would have told you. But I go and I prepare a place for you that where I may be, there you may be also. Amen. That's a comfort to know. Amen. So many people today have no understanding about where their loved ones go or uh, try to struggle and fight and try to hold on to this old life as long as they... Friend, when the Lord's ready for Randall, I'm ready. Amen? I'm ready to go. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not scared of it. I'm ready. But until then, we must continue to plow and work as hard as we can. Amen? But he said here that... <clears throat> That knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. 1 Corinthians 15 and 55 also tells us exactly what he thinks about this. Christ, Paul speaking here in 1 Corinthians, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Amen. We know that Christ was victorious over the grave because he came up out of it, did he not? Amen. And he's victorious over death. Did he not walk through and, and do many other fallible things in there as his resurrection? Sure he did. Yes. That's why we serve him. That's why he's our Savior. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Verse 10. For in that he died... He died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Jesus is saying here that me and my father, Paul's trying to tell us that he and his father are one. John 10, 30, he said, I and my father are one, okay? So once he had passed as the flesh man, he reunited into the Godhead. Amen. Okay, we know that he is now not only just with God, but he is God. Amen. <laughs> and so we must come to that conclusion that he is there. Verse number 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. How do we do this, Brother Randall? How are <clears throat> dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord? 
by keeping our minds on heavenly things. Reminding yourself that there is a prize waiting after this race. Knowing that there is a reward for those who diligently seek him. Those who live righteous and do the will of the Father and stay your best to be repented of. Friends, we have glory. We have glory through that. Twelve, let not sin therefore reign, in other words, take over in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. That's easily said. Don't let it happen. Don't let it happen in our lives. Don't let sin. Now, do, do, do you have to have it written down and, and posted on a board or a big old lock to be able to know what it is that's wrong in your life? You don't. No, we don't have to have it blatant in our face. We don't have to ask somebody. You'll know. Amen? Amen. If you're a child of God and you have been repented, you'll know when you make a mistake. You will know. Amen. 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. If you aren't careful, some can take this that after they had sown in weakness and raised in power, after they have been saved by the grace of God, that their members are instruments of righteousness. Now, if you're not careful, some might take this as self-righteousness. If you aren't careful, some may think that they are above or better than because of what they have. Father's told us many places in his word that he's no respecter of persons. None are better than the next. What they have doesn't make them better than what you are. Amen? So therefore, don't let, never let self-righteousness take over. We all sin, and we all must repent. Amen. Each and every one of us. There's not a person in the world. And I, I keep going on and, and thinking, I'm trying not to bring this out too awful much, but how that they're trying to adopt more in the Catholic Church today and bring up recognition about people in the past of 100 years ago and bringing them and trying to celebrate them as a saint of God. And, and friend, none are good no, not because not. of the works of one is visible doesn't mean that the works of the other that is invisible, no one knows of that the Father knows. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's no reason why we should boast one above another. Amen. I don't believe in that kind of thing. I believe we are all equal in the eyes of God. Amen. Amen. We will all meet our Father one day face to face. Amen. Hopefully that that blood of Christ is applied to you when you present yourself unto the Father. Amen. Amen. That's the requirement. Without the blood of Christ... You can't, you can't be accepted by the Father. Amen. <clears throat> 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Again, do we say that we have a license? Of course not. Let's go back in our studies in chapter 3. Turn back over to chapter 3 of the book of Romans. In verse number 31, we covered this already. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Did you understand that? What's it mean to establish the law? We keep it. That's right. Amen. Because we know better. <laughs> it's it's yeah. common sense, really. It's common sense to know that if you live right and you pay attention to how you live, and you have a warning system in you called the Holy Spirit that tells you when you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when you go to repentance and everything is cleaned up between you and the Father, 
you establish the law. You keep the law. Amen? Doesn't that make sense? It's not really that hard to figure out. But if you can hear some people take the words and twist them around and try to make you feel as if you are under the law or uh, no more law, but you're under grace. And no, you know, friends, remember that the law will always stand. Amen. Always. The law will always be here. We haven't done away with the law. Right. We are perfecting the law yep. and fulfilling it Amen. through our lives. Yep. Even through this dispensation we live in right now, 2018, friends, this is a very sinful world that we live Amen. in. Yes. I'm talking from uh, every degree that you can ever imagine. That's right. Amen. It's, it's sin to the max. Amen. Yes, Amen. That's what somebody said one time about that cable television. They said that uh, that one channel is uh, sin to the max. That's Cinemax. And the other one is HBO. That's hell's best offer. So, Amen. But anyway, I thought I'd throw that in there. Amen. All right. Verse number 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then, 15, shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. That's right. Never, never on purpose. Amen. Never, ever on purpose. We will make mistakes. You might fly off the handle or you might be enticed and you just, once you are overwhelmed with that enticement, it hits you. I don't have to explain all the scenarios, but you know what I'm trying to say. As long as we don't willfully do it. Verse 16, know ye not or obedience unto righteousness. Know ye not that to whom you yield your servants, obey, your servants to obey, his Servants ye are to whom you obey. In other words, if you live a, a, a wretched life, you live to, 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 to do people wrong and you do to uh, step all over people and you do to uh, never have anything or anybody in your life, friend, you sow your life to sin. Uh -huh. And we know who that servant is serving. Uh -huh. It's Satan. And so often people do it and don't realize it. They do it in a fashion, in a way that they don't realize that they're taking from people or they're stepping on people or hurting people through their problem, through their sin. But he said here, or obedience unto righteousness. Now, again, you must understand the choices here. You have to understand that there is a choice. There's nobody making you live a righteous life. And there's nobody making you live an unrighteous life. It's all on you. It's all for you and I. We have to divide that. We have to know when to quit. Or we have to know when to get away from it. We have to know when not to go around it. We have to know when to close our ears. There's things that go on in our lives that you can't control sometimes that are brought upon you. And I think Satan knows exactly how to do that. But things will come about you and you're huddled in amongst four or five people. And before you know it, the other three or four people are using words that you're not used to and acting all kind of ways that you're not used to. But you're involved inside that situation. It makes it uncomfortable because you're a child of God. You have not yielded your body or your spirit unto unrighteousness. You are a child of God. Verse 17. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Now, if you underline, underline that form of doctrine. What is that form of doctrine? It's the word of God. When you obey, he said, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine. 
which was delivered you. The Bible says that you are begotten by the Word. It's the Word of God that's what got a hold of you. It wasn't the preacher. It wasn't the singing. It was the true Word of God that told you that you was lost. It was the Word of God that showed you that you had need of correction in your life. So that form of doctrine which is was delivered you is his word. Verse 18. Being then made free from sin, you become the servants of righteousness. How are you made free from sin? Through the repentance in Jesus' name. Amen. That's the only way. I know some that think that, that once they were saved, they don't ever have to repent again. And they don't ever have to worry about what they say or do. That's incorrect. Amen. That is not how the word of God teaches us. Amen. This quotation by Paul, being then made free from sin. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that you're not going to sin. It doesn't mean that sin doesn't affect you. It means that you have the ability through Christianity and the acceptance of Jesus Christ to have your sins forgiven. Amen. That's the beauty of Christianity. Amen. Does that give us a law or a license to sin? No, it does not. There must be repentance in your life. Amen. I've said anything tonight, it's about repentance. Amen? Amen. Verse 19, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity, in other words, the weakness of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. By asking for forgiveness, and but don't ever forget Always ask for guidance. Always ask the Father for guidance. Yeah. What do you mean by guidance? Let him know. I am too weak in this place. I am too weak in this job that I'm at that to be able to be this Christian that I want to be, Lord. Give me the guidance. Give me the will uh, to turn away or uh, open a door that I can get away. From this type of thing. Sometimes Father will take that away. And deliver you and put you in a place. That where you can be comforted. But sometimes Father will allow you to go through it. Just to allow you to grow up a little bit. Amen. And to recognize that we must repent. And control our own lives. I'm not the Father. And I don't know how he thinks. But I know there's times in my life I would that I had not had been where I was, and I did ask Father to remove me. But he didn't. Kept me right there where I needed to be, amen? And I did all I possibly could to let my light shine. Continue, amen? That's just me. All right, verse 20. <clears throat> For when you were the servants of sin... You were free from righteousness. In other words, there was no rewards. If you are a servant of sin, what do you get as rewards? It sure ain't good things, amen? No, it ain't good things. When you live your life wretched and wild and, and, and crazy, you've got the, uh, the, the civil law that's chasing you. And you've got family members that don't agree with you. And you've got people that love you that are trying to help you. And you think the whole time they're against you. And then you've got those that you want to try to love. And you can't ever find love in that place. I pretty well went all the way around the street with that one. Amen. And I'm here to tell you that sin does nothing but destroy it. Amen, brother. That's what Satan's come to do. To That's kill, right. steal, Amen. and destroy it. Amen. To kill your spirit, to steal all your joy, yeah. and to destroy you yes, before the eyes of God. Amen. But all it takes is a repentant heart Amen. and a broken spirit to come to the Father. Amen? Amen. I truly believe that 
as the scripture talks about how that Christ being the good shepherd, he would leave that 90 and nine of the sheep and go after that one. He would wait and allow that one to come. As the father of the prodigal son, I believe the Bible talks about how he sat out there on the porch and he looked down that long road every day, hoping that his prodigal son would come home. And then eventually he finally did. Amen. Amen. Eventually he finally came to his senses. And he said, you know, the hired help have it better than I do right now. I can go back to my father. All I've got to do is say I'm sorry. All I've got to do is say, Father, I made a big mistake. Father, I've made the biggest mistake that I could have ever made. I walked out on your love. I walked out on your guidance. I walked out on the respect that you had for me. And when you come back to the Father, that is that newness of life that you had once before. By knowing him, it first comes by accepting Christ as your personal Savior. You must come to know the Lord. Now, am I preaching it's okay to uh, to fall out of grace with God? No, I'm not teaching you that. Nobody wants to have to go through that. No one does. My uh, my cousin, he was he was a rough one, and uh, he'd get in trouble every now and again. I'd go over to his house, and uh, it used to break my heart. But he'd have to get a whooping every now and again. He'd have to get corrected. And they'd take him in there, son. They'd tear him up. And send him right back outside where I was. And boy, that made me feel bad. But I want to say this, that if we love one another, we protect one another. And we help one another. And we do our best to try to guide one another. Not everybody has it figured out. Not everybody knows that there is a a way out of this thing. You can get away from it. You can get as far away from it as you want to be. But it takes replacing that what is evil with that which is good, is what he's trying to say. 22. Excuse me, 21. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. What good did it bring me to live like hell itself. What good did it do? Today we see that the, the the problem with the drug problems that are in the world, how it disfigures people, how that young people, beautiful, young uh, females and young males are destroyed through sin. You can see it in their face just as soon as you look at them that the sin is living inside of them. That canker is inside of them. What good has it done for them? It takes another lifetime to gain all that back, to refresh and to get yourself back on your feet and to look like somebody. Amen. It's sad. It's terribly sad. 22. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting. Amen. Your fruit unto holiness is what you have done while you're in the flesh. You understand that? That's your works that you have done for the Lord while you're in the flesh. Your works. And what does that reap for us? The end is everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Because you want to work for the master. You say, well, I've never really done no real work. I, I kind of told a couple of people about my church and, and, and told a few people about how good uh, God's been to me. And uh, you th- before you know it, you're doing the work for the Lord, you understand. You don't have to be a minister to be able to do the work for the Lord. You can let your light so shine that when people see you, they will glorify you. No, glorify the Father. That's the whole concept. That it all the glory goes right back to him who deserves it. Verse 23 to come to a close. For the wages of sin is death. 
But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. Where have we heard this before? I believe way back over here in Genesis chapter 2. Let's read it back over here in Genesis 2 real quick before we come to a close. <coughs> 2 and 17. God had quoted, But of the tree of knowledge, good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Is that what he said? Yes. Thou shalt surely die. Back here in Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If I make a small sin and don't repent from it, is it going to kill me? That's not what he's talking about. Right. He's talking about your spirit is going to die out. You're no longer going to be in fellowship with the Father. How many of you has got loved ones or family or members that you call on the phone every now and again? Yeah. What would you get to a point in your life where they aren't going to accept your phone calls any longer? They aren't going to listen to what you have to say any longer because of your lifestyle. Amen. Amen. That's exactly how Father does. He'll turn a deaf ear to it. The only way that you can come back to him is through repentance. That's right. Through Christ Jesus. You see, Jesus is on the right hand of the Father. In other words, he's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Doing what? Making intercession for you and I. What's that mean? That means he is speaking on our behalf to the Father. When we repent with a broken heart and speak to Christ, Christ is speaking on our behalf to the Father. Amen. So we know that for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Everybody knows this quotation, John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. It's through <laughs> repentance, through Christ Jesus, that continues to carry us every day. Right. Name your sins. Ask for guidance. And repent in Christ's name. Amen. That's the message for chapter 6. Amen. Amen. All right. Hope you enjoyed that this evening.